Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. Um, I wanted to pick up this sample here because, you know, uh, when you're new to the system and you're trying to learn the workflow, uh, you tend to make mistakes and it's not always clear what those mistakes are. You, you go through the steps, it seems like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, but uh, ultimately the result doesn't come out the way that it should. So. A couple of things. This is uh, this is a user sample of the the ring uh, that we were talking about yesterday, and you can see that the embossed text, the wireframe, is over here, but the embossment is over here on the model. And um, you know, so let's kind of look at what we need to do here. So if we go back to our Bob Art tab, and we come in <clears throat> and we modify our stock and we just unwrap our model, you can see that. The emboss model is in this quadrant here, but our text is halfway in uh, Y positive and Y negative. So what we need to do to correct this is we need to move this geometry so that its lower left-hand corner matches the lower left-hand corner of the Bob Art model, okay? So to do that, we'll do Utilities Translate, Sketch Enter. We're gonna pick a start position, enter an end position. So wherever we pick, we want all of the geometry to move as that reference point to zero. So uh, let me do that again real quick. So it's Utilities Translate, Sketch Enter, pick, enter, and then we'll window in what we want to work with. We'll hit our space bar, then we'll hold down shift, left click on this line here, and then we'll click on that blue dot, and we can right click cancel. So now we've moved the, the wireframe over into the appropriate area. The next thing we want to look at is uh, coming into our regular embossment. We just want to right click on our geometry and reselect. You can see it's previewed over here, so we need to tell it now it's now over here. So right click, reselect, reselect our geometry, spacebar. <clears throat> Let me do that again. Um, reselect, uh, well, I lost the selection, so I'll window it back in hit my space bar, and then I can come back up to the top and regenerate. And now you'll see that the embossed text matches the uh, embossed model. So then from here, if we go back in and we create, modify our stock, and we uh, wrap our model and choose OK, now you can see the text is aligned um, with the stock. Now, uh, the text is aligned the way that it should be. The next thing that we want to look at is uh, is, is our stock geometry. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna unblank my stock geometry, and we're we're gonna be cutting this on a one inch uh, diameter piece of stock. So right now the stock is not uh, orientated with the Bob Art model, and the other thing is they're also the same color, so it's difficult to tell you know how well they line up. There's no contrast. So what we're gonna do is go back to our Bob Art model. And we're going to just change the color of it. I'm going to make it a green color. And then I'll click OK. So now we can more easily see the difference just using contrast and color. Same thing with my regular embossment. I'm going to come in and change that to a different color and choose OK. And, and then now we have a, a much clearer idea. Now, some of the things that we'll notice is as we emboss this text with the taper, uh, they're really getting away from each other. So uh, there's a couple of things that I'm going to want to adjust. I'm going to come into my embossment here. I'm going to change this to uh, 30 thou radius and I'll choose OK. And then I'll regenerate, and then now you can see the text is uh, coming down over the model. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to shrink the diameter that it's being wrapped to so that it fits inside of the, um, the one-inch stock. So we're going to go to 0.95 here, and we'll choose OK. And then now we can, we can see if we, uh, if we go to a right view here, and just turn this text off, if we go to a, a right view, um, and we kind of zoom in here, you can see now that the text is below uh, the diameter. Now if we wanted to adjust it even more, we could come in and make this uh, 0.93 or, or some value and you can see it drops it down lower and we're uh, inside of our text. Now, the next thing that we want to do here, you can see our, our stock is kind of um, not aligned with the part per se, and then if we click on our machine setup, you can see it's located out here. I don't know if that was the intention or not. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my stock wizard as rectangular just to kind of reset it, and then I'll come back in and run it as cylindrical. And now you can see the stock lines up with the part pretty well. Um, I'm just going to 
make sure the diameter is a one inch diameter. Um, I'm going to make sure that my origin is zero, 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 and that it's aligned with X. And it's going in, in the other direction. It's, it's going, um, it's going this way. I want it going that way. So I'm just going to flop the X. Now it aligns with the part. We'll choose next. And then my origin, I'm just going to click on origin and click on the top of the part here. All right. So now when I click on my setup, you can see the setup is located on the top and we have our geometry here. Uh, in this example, we would want to use our rotary tool path. So we're going to right click. We're going to load mill four axis rotary. We'll select all of our geometry here. We'll click next. We're going to set our tool size. So we'll do, uh, we'll drop it down even smaller. Uh, all right. So we got our tool size set up. We're going to cut along. We're going to do a zigzag. Our base point, because we touched off on the top, is half inch down from the top of the material. Uh, we're going to just drop our tolerance down. And uh, right now the stock is four inches um, in length, and I don't want to cut off four inches, so I'm going to give it a start of zero and end of um, an end of uh, two inches here. That should be good. And then we'll go ahead and compute this. It'll take just a second to calculate. And then uh, I'll change the color of uh, let me change the color of my tool path so that we can see it a little bit better. So now you can see the tool path is going to run along this text uh, following the surface going two inches. So uh, again, just kind of a recap of some of the uh, some additional steps for the rotary tool path and then also uh, how to make some corrections if you don't have your geometry uh, set up correctly. So hopefully you found this information useful. Uh, either reply back to the thread, the Facebook, or the YouTube page and have a great day. Thanks a lot, guys.